Hello! Black Box have finally released the Shorts 330 and 360 for Microsoft Flight Simulator. So it's quite amusing. I sent them an email just yesterday asking how development was going and if they wanted anybody to help them test it and do some preview videos to get the word out about the aircraft. Because I think I've known about this aircraft for a very long time that they were working on it. And I've been eager to see it because I was a huge fan of their earlier aircraft in the simulator, the um, the Trilander and the Islander, and the the Bulldog, which is a fantastic military trainer. Okay, so the Shorts 330 is in front of us on the ground at Wickham Air Park. So let's have a look around it and see what it looks like. In common with lots of other um, black box aircraft, it doesn't quite look photorealistic, but they do that, I think, on purpose in turn to get very good frame rates on the majority of people's hardware. So the material modeling isn't photorealistic, but it's functional. Everything kind of is in the place it should be. There'll be lots of things animated, lots of things that you can fiddle with and play with, but it won't look like a photograph. Yeah, so it's not going to be the highest resolution mapping of the surface or anything like that. But it's good enough. You know, and if if your concern is really about avionics and systems and being able to flick all the switches and see all the dials and th see everything work as it should, then this is going to be much more up your street than one of the photorealistic planes. Okay, so if we go and scoot round to the the door, we can go and go into the back of the cockpit and or the back of the um, seating area. So this is the, obviously the passenger version that we're looking at here. So we can come straight in and have a look around. So you can see it's quite basic looking, but I think that's on purpose, as I said, to keep the frame rate up. So rather than it looking perfect in the cabin, it's kind of functional. And that tends to be a common theme with the Black Square aircraft. They don't concern themselves so much with it looking, you know, like a, a wonderful photograph of the real thing. OK, let's go and put the drone camera to one side then and we'll press the insert key on the keyboard and we are in the cockpit so we'll put on the head tracking so we can have a look around so you can see all of the dials are here and they're all functional and sharp and neat and tidy and it's you know everything works all of the breakers work it's uh, a bit mad all of the switch panel over our head and all the gauges all of the meters all of the indication lights, everything works. Over next to the co-pilot, all of his breakers and switches and dials work. We'll have a good look around them as we're starting the aircraft up. But yeah, uh, before we actually get to that though, let's just go and have a little look around the aeroplane itself. So behind us in the cockpit, we have a, a door that we can... I'm just going to take the head tracking off for a moment. A door that we can slide across. And when we slide it across, we can come down through the cockpit. I'm just doing this for just for a bit of fun really to show you what the lengths they've gone to to model bits and pieces of this aircraft and remember this is just a passenger version there's also a cargo version so we can slide this door across as well and there's the toilet it's quite amusing really. The control of the doors is handled via the cockpit so we're going to scoot straight back into the pilot seat and let's work through a procedure to get the airplane up and running. So I have been writing up my own version of the procedure. There's a very good document that comes with the aircraft. There's two documents in fact. One of them is the uh, the general guide to the aircraft. The other one is a startup guide. So we're going to work through elements of their startup guide here and I've embellished it in places and reordered it in places just to make it a bit more useful for me because Mostly because we are at Wickham Air Park and it doesn't have a ground power truck that can come out and plug into the aircraft. So we're going to have to start up on batteries, which is perfectly fine to do. It's just I won't be able to talk much along the way because if we leave it on batteries for too long, the aeroplane goes dead. Okay, so Control and 4 takes us overhead. The first thing we're going to do is go and turn the main buses on left and right. So we can see that. That's all up and running. And while we're doing things actually in the aircraft, I'm going to turn the volume up so you can hear things. And then we are going to flick this bar so it goes to internal power on the electrical master system. Then we're going to go over to control and zero, which is the lighting panel over this side. We're going to go and put on the nav lights and the anti-collision lights. 
And then it come down into the, the cockpit main view. And down here we can see the avionics master switch. We'll go and switch that on. And then we could set altitude pre-selector. Again, this is... Oops, sorry, that's not the altitude pre-selector. The altitude pre-selector is next door to it. We could set the altitude pre-selector at this point. So we'll do that. Again, this is a kind of a remnant of their startup procedure. I would do this later myself, but I'm sure everybody will refine their own routines of the way they do things. So Control and 8 takes us over to the co-pilot panels and we can go and close the doors. So that was the forward baggage door. If we go and lift the stairs and look outside, you can just see them animating in there. If we go and close the door as well, you'll see everything's animated and it has nice sounds and the baggage door as well and this is, oh, the truck just timed that perfectly didn't it to get in the way um, so then overhead with control and five and we're looking for the fuel services we're going to go and put the booster pumps on so they are here and here and then we're going to go through starting the engines up so control and zero brings us over here going to go and turn on the seatbelt sign and the no smoking sign then we're going to go to control and six and we're going to go and put the start master to armed then we're going to do the left engine first so the routine is you hit the start switch you wait for it to go out or for the switch to fall down then you go to ignition and you look down here and for the engine you can see the RPM increasing when it gets to 20% we will advance the fuel condition lever for engine for the left engine and you can see the ITT increases and overhead you will notice the ignition switch will fall back to the central position all on its own there it goes so then we can do the right engine so we want start, wait for the switch to fall down, then ignition. It's worth pointing out you're also supposed to move the propellers out of feather when you're doing this. So we've got to 20%, we can advance the fuel condition on the right engine and it continues on round as well. So as soon as the engine's up and running, so we're just waiting for the ignition switch to fall back down. We can press control and four, and we can go and turn the inverters on. And the standby inverter, we can go and turn the generators on, left and right. And we're looking good. So, prepare for flight. Control 3 will take us down to a blank panel. If you flick the switch above it, you get a GPS unit. Notice there is no CDI button. So you're not going to be, as far as I know, unless I've missed something obvious, you're not going to be flying this aeroplane chasing a GPS track. You're going to be navigating either with heading or VOR navigation, which is accurate to the real thing. If you read the book, these aircraft very rarely had a GPS system. Or an autopilot, even. So, um, but this does have a very good fu full functioning autopilot so we'll we'll see that in a bit so coming back into the cockpit we're going to calibrate the altimeters by pressing B we'll calibrate any compasses by pressing D they're just shortcuts for the simulator we'll look down we can pull this arm out of the way we're going to put the flaps on 8 degrees and you can monitor flap movement over here and then we're going to set the weather radar to on so we come over here and if we scoot across we can put this to the range we want. You can see bits of weather will show up on it. Uh, we can put the transponder to on, so that's at the top right of the cluster here. So there we go. We can set the elevator trim. This is an interesting one. So you'll see there's a, a green area on the meter and there's a red arrow. So if you pull back on your trim you can move the arrow towards the rear end of the green area which means you'll have enough trim to rotate basically um, 
but we need to release the control lock. So at the rear of the central pedestal, just here, there's this lever. The, the, um, the view is being a bit of a zone, so there we go. So if we click on that, it comes fully forwards and that releases the controls. So we can now do that, which is good. So then control zero, we're going to turn the taxi light on. The taxi light's actually underneath that fitting there. So if we go and turn the taxi light on, that works. And we can taxi to the runway at this point. So I'm going to go and centre my view up, turn the head tracking back on, centre the head tracking, release my parking brakes and ease the throttles forwards. and we just gently make our way out to the runway here at Wickham Air Park. So I'm just going to turn head tracking off for a moment just to check the things that I can be looking at doing. So we're going to go and turn the landing lights on over here. Once we get lined up on the runway, we'll obviously go and advance the fuel condition and the propeller RPM levers. Okay, we're just going to do a quick flight, by the way, over to L Street. It's only about 30 miles away, so don't worry about the sun going down. It's not going to be a problem. So we'll sit on the parking brake for a moment. We'll look down here. So we're going to advance the fuel condition all the way forwards. We're also going to advance the propellers all the way forwards for takeoff. Wait for the propellers to spool up, come off the parking brake, smoothly advance the throttles all the way forwards, hold the centre line. The plane's very docile on the ground but it does wallow around, it's heavy. We rotate at 100 knots, so we're just waiting for the indicated airspeed to come up to 100, and we rotate. Let's get the head tracking back on. Okay, so we'll be careful of pitch, so gear can come up now. We can start unwinding the flaps. But be mindful to hold the pitch and keep an eye on the indicated. Also the, um, the climb rate, vertical speed. And we'll begin a right turn towards the track we want to be on. So as we come up to 130 knots we have to raise the flaps but we can do that already. That's fine. So throttle and the throttle can come back to bring the torque away from the limit which is fine and we can also pull back the propeller RPM just a little. We'll have another look at that in a minute. So we're still climbing. So we've actually climbed beyond 2500 feet which was our target. So let's go for 3000 just for a bit of fun. So I'm going to begin trimming the nose down as we make this big lazy turn. And while we're doing that, we're going to go and turn on the autopilot. So I'll just turn this off again. There we go. So autopilot goes on and it will maintain the attitude we were at when we engaged it. Unless we are within a certain uh, degree of horizontal, in which case it will go to level. So we want to be going, if we have a look at the map, we're going to the Bovingdon VOR. So that's 11375. So if we go and look down here, we want 11375 on nav 1, and we'll transfer that over. So it's lit up on the HSI. So our course we want to be going is 54 degrees. Obviously we're off to the left of that at the moment, so we'll set the heading bug to do an intercept, so we'll travel east for example. We'll go to heading mode, we'll go to altitude hold, 
which will kill the vertical climb rate because we're obviously coming up towards 5,000 feet now. And we'll do some descending along the way just to show you how that works. So the aeroplane is now holding altitude. Let's go and slow those propellers down a bit now. We're just watching the propeller RPM here, just falling off there. Look, the torque is still quite high, so I'm going to ease the throttles back gently. There we go, so throttles coming back more into a kind of a cruise regimen. There's very good numbers in the book about, you know, the, the targets you should be aiming for with the, the RPM and the torque. So you can see the CDI is now coming in on our course. So we wanted to, what course did we want again? 54 degrees. So about there. And we can pull the heading in towards that. Obviously now we are close to that, we can go to nav and it will go nav arm and then it will go to nav when it's close enough. So if you watch the lights and keep an eye on the CDI. When it acquires arm will go out. Well that's the plan anyway. There we go. Okay, so we can now have a play with there's some predefined modes in the autopilot for climbing and descending where you don't have to worry really about anything. You would control the throttles maybe to slow yourself down. We're getting very fast that we're edging towards overspeed. So I'm going to pull the throttle back further, which means my torque is quite low now. And let's pull the propellers back further as well. So keeping an eye on the meters. Because I'm going to want to descend I'm trying to actively slow the aeroplane down. So we're just going to hit the descend button. So the aeroplane will keep descending now until it hits the altitude that's set here. So we could set this for 2,500 feet, for example. So toggle descent, and it will go. It's gone altitude select, look, by default. So it's just going to come down at a sensible rate. So it, it targets about five or 600 feet a minute to do it. So you can see you've got the, we're nearly on top of the the um, the beacon, so we want to be leaving on 117 degrees. So what we'll do to make that happen easily, the yoke's in the way isn't it? Um, 117, so we'll go back to heading mode and we'll set that to 117 degrees and we'll also set the course for it. We're over the top of the VOR now. We momentarily lost signal. And we are over speeding. Or well, we're not over speeding yet. So I've pulled the throttles right the way back to idle. This aeroplane's really quite fast. And we, well, we are descending as well, remember. So just to have a look at this, like, this is interesting me as well. So the torque range is, is enormous, so there is no harm in pulling the engines back. You know, quite significantly to control speed. So we are... At the moment, parallel to the course we want. We want more than seven degrees, okay? So let's go and set ourselves course was 117, which is about there. So we're just doing a an intercept trek, sort of 25 degrees off to... Here it comes. We're back coming back on towards the course. Yeah, so we're intercepting, coming in towards Elstree. Descending down within 500 feet of our target altitude. I just love this aeroplane that, okay, it might not look photographic, but everything works and does what it says on the tin. So let's go and put the pitot heats on, just in case this is not looking great outside. <laughs> so you've got the outside air temperature here, look, it's just above zero, so it's about five degrees. 
just coming in towards that track so let's put nav on and the, the aeroplane will navigate itself onto the track there's Elstree so what we're going to do to make a life easy for ourselves is go to heading mode in a moment so we'll fly directly over the airfield we want to be going, I think it's 80 degrees and 260 for the runway direction at Elstree so what we could do is go manual and just fly the aeroplane. Oh, the sim's just frozen for a moment. Let's just wait for it to unlock itself. wonder what's causing that today. There we go. So we're going to go and disengage the autopilot. When you disengage it, it flashes for a moment and makes that noise and then it extinguishes. So we've got manual control. So I'll just prove that we have control. Let's get the head tracking on, centre our view. OK, so we're keeping an eye on vertical speed, indicated airspeed and altitude and our compass here. So let's go and fly 80 degrees now, which will be the reciprocal of the runway direction. actually just to show you that on the map show you what's going on see so we are going to do a u-turn in a moment and come in for Elstree so let's get rid of some more of this speed so pull the throttles a lot further back we will increase the propeller rpm though Well, something we should have done and we haven't is synchronised the propellers. And that will automatically switch on auto feather in doing that. So if you give it a few moments, it will take care of that for us. Or it should. If it doesn't, I've done something wrong. Let's turn ourselves round. And start losing some speed. If you um, reduce the throttles too much, you get a, a horn, which is quite cool. Warns you, because it does have reverses, so if you advance them too far, you could kick the reverses in if you're being really... Um, how would, you, how would you put this? If you're not taking care. So that's the gear down. So, 260 degrees. We've gone, the turn's taken us a bit wide of the airfield, but that's fine. You can see the, the airfield out ahead of us. That gives us some time to line up, to be honest a nice sunset approach into Elstree. Okay, so keeping an eye on the airspeed there, we're starting to drop the flaps. Coming down towards 100 knots. So this is my first approach in the aeroplane, so hopefully everybody will be kind on me bringing it in smoothly. It's quite a short runway at Elstree, we don't get much room to mess around with it, so we'll see how we get on. So Elstree has Vassy lights, I seem to remember. It doesn't have um, an ILS. Just come in level until we get sight of the lights. I think we've got one red and one white now, but it's difficult to make out at this distance. In terms of wind, obviously in the real world you would talk to 
air traffic control or ATIS. Uh, we've got quite a strong headwind actually, but the wind's coming straight into our nose. And obviously the wind will abate as we get lower, which it normally does. So we're just above 100 knots at the moment. Let's start losing some of that speed. So we've got one red and one white. We can now see the Vasi lights just about. Let's go for full flaps as we come underneath 100 knots. Always a bit nervous flying an aeroplane for the first time. Coming down to 90 knots. It's interesting, at idle, it's just losing speed in the descent. So it's got quite a lot of positive thrust actually. But it handles wonderfully. Okay, we got one red and one white. It seems to be sinking quite fast though, so I'm just going to lift the nose. Increase the throttle gently. It's getting quite dark, isn't it? Could do with switching the lights on. Should we try the L key, see if that does that for us? Not really. <laughs> There's obviously quite a few switches to flick to do that. We've gone high now. So let's drop this down onto the approach again. There we go, one red, one white on the Vasi lights. Got full flaps, gear is down. Bring it above the wrong way. And we're down. Reverses and wheel brakes. And it stops remarkably quickly. Okay, so let's come off the reverses. Come off the wheel, wheel brakes. Flaps can come up. And we'll turn the aeroplane around. And go and park up. So there's lots to learn with this aeroplane because there's a lot of systems to play with. As you've seen above and down the sides of the aircraft, it's really quite impressive. And it's going to take a while to unbundle, you know, how everything works. I'm super impressed with it. Really am. We're going a bit fast, aren't we? Let's slow, us down. Let's slow ourselves down. So, now we're on the ground, we can reduce the Let's do this without the tracking because it's a pain in the so and so. There we go. Pull the prop speed back to ground idle. The landing lights can come off. tracking back on so we can look around easily pick our way through the parking here at Elstree now is that car going to get out of our way so yeah obviously I need to learn things like the, the light controls within the cockpit which is a whole bank of switches for that is he going to move, or are we just going to drive through him? I'm afraid we're going to have to drive through him today. So please pay no attention to the AI van, which wants to be famous for five minutes. Okay, on to the parking brake. Going to turn the radar off before we start irradiating people, I guess. And pull the fuel. I always do that. Fuel back to cut off. Propellers back to feather. And should we go and watch the animations to see what that looks like?
Very good, isn't it? I'm impressed. Obviously, there's a whole procedure around shutting the airplane down to do it in a logical manner. Um, I'm not going to do that today because this is just a very quick first look and I'm still figuring the procedures out for myself, to be honest. But hopefully you've enjoyed this. And this is the Black Box Shorts 330. In the package you get the 330 and the 360. Actually, that'll be worth having a quick look at. Let's go to the main menu in Flight Simulator and I can show you what you get in the package. It really is quite impressive. get more than most aircraft in the sim. They've been working on this for some time, it's worth saying. Or worth reiterating. Okay, so back in the menu, if we go into the aircraft selection. So, you get... I've gone for the, the basic 330, which is here. You also get a 330 cargo, a 330 Sherpa, Three, uh, 360, 360 cargo, uh, a C-23A, which is a military variant, a 23B, and within each of these you get many liveries. Yeah, so if you go and look at the basic, the cargo, you get a whole raft of liveries for that one. If we go and look at the 330, there's a whole raft of operators for that one all over the world. It really is impressive. So anyway, that was the shorts 330, 360 family from Black Box. Hope you enjoyed that, and that was a first look, and I'll see you again soon.